I'm going to try to do this in 10 minute window. This is going to be very difficult. I heard someone teaching today from Hebrews and he was going from the 10th chapter in a very common passage of scripture of the 26th verse. So let me read this to you first. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of, for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Oh, of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot of the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, and holy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Now, I've heard this taught in all kinds of ways throughout my, my years in the church world. Let me tell you something. Let's be clear. One of the reasons that the Calvinist doctrine like to use this passage of Scripture as proof that you have eternal salvation the minute that you were born again, you were the seed that was planted, and now you're going to grow, and your soul cannot die is because they leave out a lot of other things. They leave out the fact that they don't understand salvation to start out with. You, Being saved, you can get in a boat, fall out of the boat. Somebody saves you, pulls you back in, you fall out of the boat. Let me tell you something. The disciples were saved many times in their journeys with Jesus. Peter being one of the prime examples of such. But we need to understand that we are saved by grace, that God's favor for us, especially after we become born again. What happens when we become born again? There is something that changes. It is not that we've automatically been given eternal life and we have eaten of the tree of life. You can't do that until you pass the judgment. Revelations is very clear on the fact that the tree of life is in the garden and you won't get to eat of that garden in heaven until you've passed through judgment. That's why Peter said in the third chapter, or I believe it, I don't I don't remember, I don't want to quote it off head, but I think it's the third chapter, Peter. It's in the two-hour video I made last night that's on YouTube that tells you that judgment first begins with the house of God. Where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? If you make the flat statement that if you've sinned, once you've become a Christian because you've crucified Christ in flesh again, and then you must be damned to hell, there is no salvation for you, then here's the problem. See, I heard that preached all my life. But it presents a problem. And when there's a problem, then you better go back and search the scripture a little more so that you can find the true understanding. In John 6, 37, Jesus said, Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Did you hear that? And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Now the first thing somebody's going to jump on here and say is, Well, then does that not prove that you have eternal salvation? The moment that you accept the Lord, that you believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. No, it does not mean that you have eternal life immediately. It means you've started the race, but you haven't finished the race. You've just started the race. You've got to finish the race to receive the prize. And you've got to continue in the word of God to receive the prize. Interesting, the book just before just before that we get to uh, Revelations is the book of Jude. And Jude says something that we must, well, I forgot what verse it is, so I'll have to look up the exact verse. I'm sorry, forgive me for that. 
Jude says something that explains it all very clearly. If we will put the pieces together. If we just put them together. It's not hard. It's only hard because we don't want to put the pieces together. We don't want to search the scripture. Because if you search the scripture, then you find the truth. But see, I know the Bible doesn't contradict itself. So therefore, I know that If we research it, we will find the right answer. Jude 1, verse 12. Let's read this together. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, Carried about of the winds. See, that's the same people that was being talked about in Hebrews. They're people who made a profession and then they backslid and they become sinners. Remember, I said to you yesterday that dead in Christ is different from asleep in Christ? This is where these conclusions come from. But listen to what he said. Carried about of the wind. Trees who fruit wither. So they are trees. They were seeds that grew from a sapling to a tree and produced fruit, but their fruit withered. Without fruit. They are trees that grew and produced no fruit. They are twice dead, plucked up by the roots the dead in Christ dead means having no life there's no life and we know that when we become a born again and we accept Christ then we have life because Christ is the life within us we studied that over in 1 John that Christ and his spirit comes in us and gives us life so, you see, we have the life so long as we have Christ. But to say that what Hebrews is teaching is, well, then you must immediately die if you've crossed that line because, look at Ananias and Sapphira, is a misunderstanding of what salvation means. Salvation is the saving grace of Christ to those who, who do what? Keep the commandments of Christ. Once we start that journey, if we stop doing it, we backslide. We walk away from Christ. We, we become that false teacher, that false deacon, that false elder, that false Christian. Then we become antichrist. We are denying that Christ is truly the Son of God and that he changed us and made us new. And therefore, we have become dead, twice dead. And therefore, there remaineth no sacrifice for us when we stand in the day of judgment. All of our excuses, all of our, I, didn't I do miracles? And what wasn't I baptized in the Holy Ghost? And didn't I get baptized three or four times? And didn't I do this? And didn't I do that? Holds no water. Because you understand, you need to understand. You're on the Lamb's book of life the moment that you become born again. And you remain on that until judgment. And then, if you've changed the words of the prophecy by your actions, by your deeds, then your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. And you, the dead, the sinner, will go with the ungodly to the lake of fire, which is the second death. Sin is a willful transgression against God's known law. 